Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gore Con, in which we take the time to speak with CEOs about what's going on at their small cap companies. With us today, Laurent Meneza, present CEO in Tema Solutions, trades on the venture under ITM for our friends in the US, ITMF. Uh, and for those of you who are looking for them online, in Tema.ca. Generally speaking, you know how much Agoracom has been behind iGaming and esports since 2017, way ahead of everybody. Uh, the global online gambling market, iGaming, we've reported, could potentially hit a trillion dollars by the end of this decade. Why? Pretty simple. Exponential growth in the number, number of people coming online. The whole world's still coming online. Two, you got a number of jurisdictions, countries that are legalizing gambling because they want that tax revenue. On the other side, esports. What's there that what's there that could be said? It's exploding. It's massive. The biggest brands in the world, the biggest tournament prizes, the biggest online audiences is more than five, six hundred million people participating in this. Even the IOC is recognized as a medal event for the 2020 uh, Asian Games. But despite all this, the vast, despite all of this, right? Esports is still dramatically under monetized relative to traditional sports. That's where Intima thinks it can come in. It's an emerging esports and iGaming company, more than lip service. They got the first acquisition under the belt, $5 million financing. They've engaged Lazarus growth and they've added three big advisors onto their team. So they're going places. It isn't just a buzzword. Laurent, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, George. We're really excited to be here. Um, look, a lot of people use iGaming and esports now as buzzwords. You know, they're just trying to hop on what's what's what the latest trend is. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you guys have been able to, like I said, first acquisition, $5 million in funding, great people. Without getting the details, big picture, why are you guys attracting this kind of money and this quality of people? What do they know about you? Uh, I guess they know uh, a little bit, but uh, we're going we're to teach the market uh, to, to pay attention. Uh, we got the funding, we got the, the acquisitions, we got the team. Uh, we're going to be making some big waves in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months, specifically in esports. Uh, we're, we're poised to really become a, a big player in esports, specifically on the, the, the TSX. So we're, we're very excited. There's a lot of things going on in the background. Uh, the, the new additions of, of the advisors is going to help uh, our stra strategy, uh, our, our market, our marketing. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's what we're doing right now. And, and before I get into some of the details, look, the five million dollars that speaks for itself. We're going to talk about the acquisition in a second, how that fits in the bottom. But the people you've attracted, right? You've attracted some some great people. <clears throat> Lee Hughes almost needs no introduction to the Agoracom audience. Uh, fantastic, you know, VC uh, financier, researcher in the small cap space, who's done unbelievable things. But Jonathan Cowett, am I pronouncing that uh, uh, correctly? COVID. Uh, COVID, okay. Uh, you know, public companies such as Audible, WeightWatchers.com, where he's done acquisition brand development. And then Jennifer Lazarus, talk to me about these two people and the kind of, you know, the quality that they bring to Antema and as an indication of where you guys are going. So Jonathan and Jen are crucial to our, our next steps. Uh, they have the vision, the leadership, and the pedigree to really bring uh, Intema and, and, and the, the, the future pieces of Intema to where we want to be. Uh, talking about a global company, a global company in esports, a global company in iGaming, one that, have, that has the, the best teams and the best branding because that's what's needed to attract uh, users to our platforms. At the very end of the year as well, you guys, uh, you guys engaged Lazarus Growth and they've been very instrumental in helping uh, companies in the iGaming and eSports sector. So fair to say that you guys are really bringing on the best of the best to help this company and people are accepting you know, your invitations and appointments. That's very true. Uh, so Lazarus Growth, uh, has about 40 years in gaming. Uh, they're, they've worked with companies like DraftKings, uh, Stars Group, uh, Pinnacle, et cetera. Uh, they are the pioneers in gaming law and uh, with them behind us and, and, and 
as, as partners with us, we really believe that whatever we need in terms of licensing and regulation, we will achieve and we will get in, in a short time span. But now on the action side, more than just bringing in money and people, you acquired HypeX. GG, you closed that recently here in Q1. Uh, that's, I'm reading here, a first of its kind social gaming platform or brings together many facets of the esports world uh, into a centralized platform and empowers gamers with rewards, influence, engagement. Um, talk to us a little bit about HypeX and how that's an indication of what the kind of acquisitions you're hoping to, to bring into Intema. So HypeX is, is, is our first one, but is actually a major splash. Uh, Peer-to-peer -peer gaming is the future, we believe, uh, especially in, in the sports, uh, in, in the esports world, where you have right now the traditional players are all going for esports gambling. So think of a Bet365 or a DraftKings. Uh, they're kind of overlooking peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer means that you could build your own tournaments. Uh, you have endemic and non-endemic uh, marketing, and more importantly, you have access to users that are extremely faithful and extremely engaged. So in a social gaming context, what you have is that you don't have to leave the platform to update your, your Twitter, your uh, Discord, your Facebook, et cetera. Wow. So what happens is that the gamers stay and the tournaments get streamed live, uh, are live streamed every day. And the rewards, like you said, are, are very, very palatable for individuals that want to get into maybe casual gaming, but at the same time want to get into a professional esports and being discovered. I'll tell you what I like about peer to peer a lot is I'm not, a, I'm not a big gambler. So I'm not the type of guy that goes on to a website and bets against the house, but man, I love my Dallas Cowboys. Right. And, and if someone's on social media is talking smack, you know, I want to make that bet against them. And it's not, it may not be just about the game. It may be, Hey, our quarterback's going to throw for more than 300 yards, or we're going to limit your running back to less than hundred yards. So it opens up that flexibility. Uh, and you guys see that as, as an, uh, that part of the market, almost, I don't want to say being ignored, but not given the proper attention. And is that where you guys want to create your differentiator? Exactly. Uh, that's what we started when we, when we started this evaluation of how we're going to attack the market and how we're going to build an ecosystem. Uh, we realized that everybody, like I said, was going towards the traditional gambling platforms and just porting it to esports. Uh, with peer to peer, you have an unlimited ways of engaging the users. And you can do so by using their own social media, you can do so by creating their own tournaments. Peer to peer is, 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 is like I said, the future, but it's also something that nobody else is doing. And, and I want, want that to be explained because the peer to peer channel and wagering specifically when it comes to peer to peer has a, a, a certain context that you have to basically build your own tournaments. And in doing so, you could attract the right types of advertisers, the right types of sponsors, the right types of partners based on the tournaments that you're using. So it could be Fortnite, it could be FIFA, it could be Rocket League, but here you don't need a professional league to participate in those, in, in those tournaments. So peer-to-peer -peer for us is very, very important. And we're starting with that, but it's, we're gonna be doing other things also. Yeah, by the way, when I was using my example earlier about the Dallas Cowboys, that's the old man real world. Obviously, you know, you guys are really going after the esports e side. Uh, Another big advantage of peer-to-peer, -peer, Laurent, is less risk, right? Because you can't lose $10 million this weekend because it was an upset in the esports world, and then you got to bankroll that. How? Why, talk to me a little bit about that business model and why it's it's a added security, especially in the small cap world where you don't have access necessarily to big money if you needed it to cover a big loss. Yeah, the, the risk management is a lot easier in peer-to-peer. -peer. What happens is that since you're building your own tournaments, uh, there is no lines, right? There's no third party. There's no house saying that uh, the Dallas Cowboys are favorite negative 3.5 versus the Buccaneers, let's say. Here, it's you build a tournament, you can play one versus one, you can play one versus 64. Uh, and it's, it's a social gaming on the fact that you make your own odds and you're betting on yourself and it's skill based. So the risk management for us is a lot easier. Uh, but at the same time, and, and it's all about user engagement, right? Uh, with the data that we, that, that we get and we aggregate from this platform, 
we can build leaderboards, statistics, uh, consumer patterns, and all the good stuff that you need for data to make sure that the risk management continues on our side. Now, devil's advocate, you know, this is a big market where we, I talked about it at the intro with big players in there. So you might excuse some investors that they're wondering, well, how's Intema fit there? You know, how, how do they carve out their piece of the pie? And you're talking about a global market. So is there a part of the market outside of the sector, which is peer to peer? Is there a geographical? Is there a size? Is there, because you got to start somewhere. You can't just, the best, what they say is you can't eat an elephant all at once. You got to eat it bite, one bite at a time. How, how does your one bite at a time strategy look? Latin America. That's our one bite strategy. Uh, we believe that, that the platforms that, we're, that we are acquiring and, and building uh, are gonna be uh, crucial for Latin America. Latin America is, is ripe for, for, for esports. Uh, they are the, uh, the second biggest esports uh, ecosystem. And we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be going into Latin America very, very soon. Uh, we, we believe by, by uh, third quarter, uh, fourth quarter of 2021, beginning of 2022, we should be a presence in Latin America. And that makes it, and I'm glad you're saying that in terms of A, you're focusing on a specific region because you can't just, you can't, what's the famous line? You, you can't just boil the ocean, right? That's, that's, a, that's a death sentence. Um, at the same time, what, I, what I'm hearing, it sounds like acquisition is going to play a very important role because if you try to strictly grow organically at the very beginning, that would be an expensive and difficult endeavor, wouldn't it? So is it fair to say that acquisitions are going to play uh, a, a, the biggest role in your growth and positioning for the first little while anyways? 100%. Acquisitions is the way uh, of, of our future. Uh, the reason, one of the reasons we raised the $5 million that you alluded to before is, is because we now have the firepower to go out and find companies that will help us build an ecosystem in esports and iGaming. Uh, there's going to be some acquisitions that are coming down the line that will, will make sense once you look at a global picture. So we have the patience of the market right now, and we're, we're very happy to have that. We have the support of the market, which is more important. And we believe that in a couple of months, the full picture of, of what we are building in Intema will be uh, public, first of all. And then second of all, people will see and, and, see and see our vision that we're building towards right now. How do you find your targets, Laurent? Because that's difficult to do no matter what, right? Uh, it's difficult to find your targets, whether in Europe, Latin America, or wherever the case is. Is that where Lazarus comes in, or or is or do you guys are you guys just really really good at digging your heels in and scouring the world looking for opportunities? I think it's a bit a uh, bit of both. Uh, Lazarus Growth has helped us extremely in in finding targets. Uh, they have a network and, and and expertise in this world of, of gaming that uh, nobody else has, I, I believe. And the second part is that we have a team here uh, that, that you know with, with Lee, Lee Hughes, and and myself, who come from I come from a portfolio management background. Uh, we take our time. We look at targets that are undervalued, uh, and they're undervalued due to COVID. Yeah, COVID really changed the world. It changed uh, people's revenue streams and we're realizing that there's some excellent companies out there that are underfunded that we can pick up and that we can put them in our ecosystem specifically in esports and gaming and we can really make a, a massive massive uh, mark out there you've got a three pillar business model we've talked about a couple of them one of them is the i gaming for esports and traditional sports so that's for everyone at home who's getting used to language that's online gambling for esports and traditional sports. We kind of covered that. Uh, there's the esports product offerings. Kind of covered that, but it sounds like there's more to come through potential acquisitions, things like that. The third one, though, is entertainment and infrastructure. Uh, are you able to expand a little bit on that by what you mean by entertainment and, and, and infrastructure? Uh, I can give it in general terms, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, well, whatever you can. Yeah, <laughs> look, my job is to try and get out of you what I can, but you, you, you give back whatever you, whatever you can. Uh, certainly. Uh, entertainment and infrastructure. So what we're looking at is, is the, the esports uh, e industry in itself. And we realized that to build an ecosystem and, and to get the full picture, we, we, we have to identify certain pieces. One of those pieces is a team. Uh, an esports team is very important. 
uh, when it comes to uh, to entertainment. Uh, these these teams generate uh, millions and millions of followers, millions and millions of views on wow. different platforms, yeah. and that equates in a business sense to revenue revenue in, in terms of ads and sponsorships, and and that's what's important right now. Uh, like you said, it's a it's a big field. There's lots of players. Uh, just that we have to di uh, differentiate ourselves. And we also have to diversify. And that's what we're doing right now. We're looking at certain properties and certain teams that would help us, uh, one, uh, with our own ecosystem in terms of millions of followers and millions, millions of new users joining our platforms. And two, uh, we want to go into a space that, uh, if you look at 100 Thieves or Phase or Cloud9, uh, those companies are valued in the 300 million uh, ranges and they're doing the they're doing that with entertainment and revenue and ad spending dollars man so you guys are i don't know if I, it's, it's it's difficult to imagine i don't know if i can say fully integrated but you're going from social you know social plus the game and you're putting teams right into the mix as well or that's your plan anyways you guys what what's your plan laurent long term one team multiple teams how do you see that unveiling one team would make the most sense. Uh, we want to concentrate on that one team uh, and make that team. And once again, I'm going to use the word diversification. We want that team to diversify from, let's say, playing just Fortnite to playing Valorant, uh, Counter-Strike, Go, uh, DOA, LOL, etc. Man, a lot of acronyms there for old guys. I know what they are. <laughs> Legends, a lot of people think, laugh out loud. What's a laugh out loud league, right? That that's league of, league of uh, legends, uh, but nonetheless, a lot for the old timers to to learn. But there are a lot of young people watching. ETA. Clearly, you start with Lazarus. You raised the money. You brought on the people. You made it your first acquisition, and that's all pretty much in first quarter, right? That's why we're sitting here talking. It's April the twelfth, and pretty much everything. I mean, Lazarus is on December thirty first, but let's just we we can count that as first quarter of activity how many more quarters until you think you guys because it's never going to end obviously you're going to uh, growth and technology i gaming esports is never going to end but how long do you think it'll be until you've got an uh, a foundation to start generating revenue to start moving forward as a as a as an operation that, that you're envisioning we believe and we strongly be believe that by 2022, all our pieces will be uh, in, on the board and we'll be in, the, in a strong position for 2022, the, the rest of the year of 2022 to, uh, to, to grow our revenue and, and, and make a, an, an immense, immense splash in the, uh, in the esports world. Right. So fair to say you're going to use Q2, Q3 and Q4, <coughs> pardon me, this year to build in. So what I like is the patience. You're not just going gangbusters running over yourselves. You, you're you comfortable saying, hey, market, we're putting together all the right pieces and we're doing it the right way. We're not rushing to get this done. We have a plan and we want to stick through that plan. Uh, patience is, is something that uh, we, we've learned can, can, can really help us. Uh, we've been patient this whole time. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the background uh, that will be divulged as we, we, we progress in the next couple of quarters. But uh, yeah, we, we, we like to be uh, thoughtful and, 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 and patient when we make acquisitions and when we make moves. But I guess also to clarify for people at home, if you acquired Georgecom, you know, Georgecom Esports, and I've got a million users on my platform and I'm generating X dollars, uh, those, those kind of situations, if they're coming, because I don't know, but I'm, you know, I'm thinking about what investors would be asking right now at home those would be immediately uh, accretive to the balance sheet or the income statement of the company and, and revenue and so on going forward, correct? That is absolutely correct. Uh, everything that we're doing, everything that we're adding or acquiring will uh, not only help on the balance sheet, but will create this ecosystem. And, and I, I keep going back to ecosystem for a reason. Uh, we want to be the biggest ecosystem in esports, And that encompasses certain... Uh, infrastructure uh, plans that we have and team plans and entertainment, like you said. But once we do so, uh, the revenue is really going to really reflect what we've been doing for a year. 
Is that easier said than done? Because I admire the, you know, the vision and and the goal to be the biggest. But man, there's a there's a lot of competition out there. Where does that comfort, confidence come from, come from, Laurent? And again, it's not just come from you. Third party validation. You got your acquisition. You got the five mil. You got the people joining the advisory boards and, the cons- and as consultants, so on and so forth. So they're seeing something. I mean, wh- where does that confidence come from to be, you know, to be the biggest or one of the biggest? The confidence is, is, is because we know our competitors. Uh, we, we see what's going on uh, in, in the esports world, in the gaming world. Uh, we see that uh, with our patience and our due diligence that we've been doing, we can be that player and, uh, you know, we can rival all the, the, the competition out there. So it's, 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 a, it's a silent confidence, confidence if you like. Uh, we don't like to, you know, create news just to create news. Everything that we do is a, is a piece of the puzzle. And once the puzzle is going to be finished, then I, I believe that the, the market will really step back and take a look at what we've done in, you know, uh, in, in 2021 and 2022. And the data does support. That's the important thing. Uh, and look, what, this is why we love to have these interviews and drill down because if George Colm comes along and says, I want to be the biggest widget company in the world, well, you know, give me a reason, give me an opportunity, give me, you know, where are you going to infiltrate, George? In, in your case, the, the data is, and reading it, I said at the beginning, but I want to emphasize it. Esports is dramatically under monetized relative to traditional sports. So for every million fans in NBA, NHL, NFL, and then esports, for example, uh, there's a big drop off there, right? So that tells you that even though there are a lot of people in the space, a lot of players, they haven't quite figured it out yet. Is that the void you guys want to fill? Is that the void you want to attack? 100%. That is exactly the, the void we're going to attack. Uh, under monetization is because it's a new, it's new. It's, it's, it's a new era. It's a, it's a new sector. Uh, the, 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 the big four, NHL, MLB, NBA, and NFL have been around for, for, for 50, 60 years, or almost 100 years. Uh, esports has not. Uh, esports is, is starting to get traction. It's starting to get sponsors. It's starting to get legitimacy, and we really believe that uh, the world is, as the world we know is, has changed with COVID. It's only going to get better for esports because the you know esports is not a live. It, it, it's not a live stadium uh, game, right? You can still do it in, live, in stadiums, but COVID restrictions are very tough these days. But it's mostly online and it's mostly uh, competitive sports that can be streamed on all those platforms. Yep. And we are, we have those platforms and we are starting to, to see that with Hypex and their growth. Uh, they started with 50,000 users. They're currently at about 63,000 in less than a month of, 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 wow. of us acquiring them. Yeah. And there's a lot of things happening with Hypex that they're going to come out in the next couple of months. Uh, but we really believe that uh, esports is the future under monetization is going to start uh, bridging the gap in the next couple of years. And we are poised to, to, to be there at the forefront. Well, Laurent is someone who, and I think in the small cap world, we were first, Gorkom was first to invest, first to find, first to pound the table, first to market, uh, you know, small cap esports company back in 2017, that's now in the NASDAQ. So everything you're saying completely jives with what we see. I mean, the growth over the last four years has been great. The growth this decade for esports is going to be absolutely monstrous. I think the best way to envision that is I've heard one executive say every day, traditional, traditional sports loses a fan, people are dying, and esports gains a fan because all these kids, you know, they're more, they're, they're at least 50% uh, more likely to go to esports than traditional sports. So, you're definitely going to a massive market. And in this quarter, you've already got off to a great start. Uh, acquisition, financing, you know, the three additions to your team, Lazarus. So congratulations on what you've done already. And that's, you know, especially after this interview, gives us enough um, to look forward to. Terms of, hey, if you pull that off in Q1, let's see what we do in Q2 and Q3. Last word to you before we sign off. Well, thank you very much for having me here. And uh we look forward to, 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 to building what we're building. Uh, we're building the future. Uh, esports is really what we're going into. Uh, we're going to have an ecosystem 
uh, by the end of 2021, that will be one of the the, the best in 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 in, in all, at least on the TSX. And uh, frankly, I appreciate your time, and uh, I wish you have a great day. Nope, don't appreciate my time, buddy. Uh, you know, we we only bring on people that we think have something to say, and clearly the market and the people around you have that confidence. So I think it was time to start sharing that uh, with, with the rest of the world. For everybody at home, uh, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcast platform. To Laurent Benezra, he's president, CEO of Intema Solutions, trades on TSX Venture, as you can see, right on your screen, ITM. For our friends in the US, ITMF. Uh, and for our friends, and, and, and sorry, and for those of you who are looking to do your due diligence online, Go to intema.ca. Some really cool information there. But more importantly, put them on your watch list. You see the Twitter handle right there. Make sure you put them on your watch list. Watch this company grow. Don't say we didn't tell you so. Have a great day. See you next time.